Are we ready? Can we make a couple of comments real quickly? We don't want to take up too much of your time. We have not seen all the numbers. We have not gotten any detail on the governor's uh, revised budget yet. What we do know is uh, that the governor has proposed uh, modifying his budget, but uh, still an increase of $1.8 billion in taxes to solve a $627 million problem uh, with no reform in the spending side. Uh, we have not heard anything from the legislative leaders. As far as we know, many of the taxes that the governor has said is not in his proposal are still on the table as far as the legislative leaders are concerned, so we are not sure where they're at. Uh, we are very concerned about uh, this. We don't think this is right for the Minnesota economy, right for the people of Minnesota. It's kind of uh, government gone wild down here. We're getting close to spring break, uh, tax of Palooza. So uh, we're just uh, willing to be here to help and offer solutions that we think do work, which is uh, the direction our budget took two years ago where we said let's offer some restraint, try to live within the means that the people of Minnesota have offered to the government, and try to restrain the spending growth to within the growth of the uh, economy. We think that works. That has generated revenue. Uh, we think that's the direction with the people of the state of Minnesota, not additional tax burdens on the economy, and let's make sure if we're going to spend money we get real reform and effective spending and effective results. Thank you. As the senator said, we're waiting to see uh, kind of the final uh, uh, proposal. We expect those numbers will be out uh, in an hour or so. Um, initially, uh, our reaction, uh, obviously I'm happy to see the governor has reeled back some of the, some of the tax proposals that he's put forward. Um, we know that those are going to be uh, damaging to Minnesota's economy. We feel Minnesota's economy is headed in the right direction. Uh, unemployment's down. Uh, people feel like the economy is recovering. And, and people really understand right now that taxes are the wrong direction. And it was interesting to see in recent polling uh, that people really understood that taxing Minnesota businesses would make them less competitive uh, and how unpopular that actually was with the public. So uh, we know and, and we, we know that the public is starting to see uh, that the governor's uh, tax proposals uh, were going to be harmful to the economy. Um, I'm a little dismayed to see that the governor hasn't uh, completely realized that, that taxes uh, uh, are going to be bad for Minnesota's economy. He's still proposing uh, about 1.8 or $1.9 billion of, of taxes and, and uh, that's going to be about $2.9 billion of, of additional spending in the next biennium from the last. Uh, again, Minnesota's economy has grown over the last two years. Um, the unemployment rate is down and we feel like things are headed in the right, in the right direction. And we know that Minnesotans understand uh, that raising taxes in a fragile economy will actually hurt Minnesota's economy and hurt job growth in Minnesota. Uh, we also are a little concerned that we haven't heard from uh, the legislative leaders, uh, the Democrat leaders of the House and the Senate, uh, that, that the tax proposals that we're talking about in the legislature, um, that they haven't retracted those and pulled those off of the table. We're talking about huge gas tax increases, um, you know, continue to talk about uh, sales taxes and those kinds of things. Uh, the governor did not give an indication today uh, that he would veto uh, a sales tax. Um, so we're, we're a bit concerned about some of those things. Uh, both legislative leaders said a few weeks ago that they thought that at least a, a partial business to business tax would be part of the final deal. Um, and, and we know how damaging that would be on Minnesota's economy. Uh, so we, we continue to stand opposed to that. Uh, but we, we really want to stand for what uh, we've seen over the last couple of years, which has been growth in Minnesota's economy, um, a reduction in unemployment. And, and we know that all Minnesotans win uh, when Minnesota's economy grows and we let the private sector create jobs. So that's what we want to accomplish. And we stand ready to work with the governor and the legislative leaders to accomplish that. Your alternative to this, how would you balance the some $600 million uh, budget deficit without raising any revenue? You know, we obviously uh, handled a $6.2 billion deficit uh, over the last uh, biennium, and, and we did that by finding efficiencies, and, and I think there's more that we can continue to find there. Um, we're committed to, to finding a government that works better. Uh, and, and not a government that's just more expensive. And we think that's the answer. So uh, we can t continue to find efficiencies. But we've also seen the economy grow, and we've got a, you know, about a $3 billion surplus in the current biennium. Um, so we know that uh, by letting Minnesota's economy grow and let the private sector create jobs, uh, that we'll actually see more revenue to the state. So um, we don't have to raise taxes to get additional revenue to the state. We can actually let Minnesota's economy grow, and, and we'll accomplish uh, uh, just exactly that. What happened to the governor's original proposal? Did it fail to get legislative and public support, or did he fail to build that support? Well, we think uh, that he's been out trying to get support. I don't think uh, that the people of Minnesota were responding to that, uh, that effort. Uh, I don't know that there was a lot of support in the legislature, clearly none from our side, 
uh, as uh, Representative Dow mentioned, uh, the legislative leaders on the other side did talk favorably about some elements of the governor's plan. I don't know if behind closed doors what they were saying, but but uh, we don't think the people of Minnesota broadly supported what the governor was talking about. All I heard across the state was criticism of his plan. Yeah, I'll echo that. Uh, obviously, there the. The, uh, the governor's original plan didn't have a lot of legislative support, uh, really, frankly, from, from either side of the aisle. And, and uh, it says something when not even Democrats in the legislature are supporting a tax plan. So uh, obviously, uh, we think that there's an appetite for spending uh, with the DFL in, in the legislature. And, and we're a little afraid of, of where we're going to try to find the kind of revenue uh, that we think to, to accomplish the kind of spending that they want. Um, but. The, the thing that I thought was most interesting is the public didn't respond to the governor's tax increases. So we we're seeing signs that the public really understands uh, that what's going to be good for Minnesota is to grow Minnesota's economy, and they see that tax increases stop that from happening. It does seem to respond to the fourth tier, doesn't it? The public does seem to respond to the fourth tier, which is the basis of the um, I, that's unclear to me if they responded to that or not. I think that's been a part of the whole uh, plan that he proposed, but most of the discussion in the last couple of weeks has been around the sales tax, business to business tax. We'll see what happens in the next few weeks as there's more focus on this plan. But I think the key is the taxes are to support something. What is it supporting? It's supporting a spending regimen, and I think you've got to look at what is the spending for. And that's where we have real problems when you look at the amount of spending that he's proposing and what is it accomplishing. There's no reform. There's nothing that you can point to to say this is going to accomplish good things for the people of Minnesota. That's what we need to focus on. What are we going to accomplish with the money we're going to spend? So do you think you're going to the polling that shows that the majority supports the fourth tier? The same polling you guys used to say that they didn't support the B2B? Well, all I would say is I know that most of the focus in the last couple of weeks has been on the business-to-business -business taxes. We'll see that now that that is off the table, what the focus to, uh, turns to on the other. I do know that a lot of people that are being gonna, gonna be hit by this fourth tier are not necessarily uh, uh, individuals, but are small businesses. And we'll see what their voice looks like in the next few weeks. How do you, Mr. Leader, as Republicans, leaders, stop the fourth bracket? You don't have the votes. How do you stop it? Well, I think uh, it'll be time for the public to weigh in. Uh, we didn't have the votes to stop the uh, uh, sales taxes and the business of business tax, but I think the people of Minnesota said very loudly and clearly, this is not good for the economy. And I think the governor has said that high taxes hurt the economy. And so I think it's time for the people of Minnesota to weigh in on all the taxes and just ask the question, do you need high taxes to grow the economy? We don't believe so. But isn't it a case, isn't it a case of the sales tax that at least allegedly affected a broad group of people, whereas the, the, the one the governor still has in his proposal is only 2%. They got a heck of a lot less, at least, number of votes. <laughs> the, the, question, the question in my mind isn't about votes. It's about do higher taxes help grow the economy or do they hurt the economy? That's going to be the debate. That's what the people of Minnesota need to weigh in on. I think the interesting thing about the, the, the top tier tax is uh, that recent polling has been far lower than it has been in the past, surprisingly low, in fact. Um, so we know that people are understanding that raising taxes is going to be harmful to Minnesota's economy. And, and I think that's the takeaway. The governor's original budget fell flat. People didn't like it. He's retracted that. We're glad to see that. But you know, this, this new tax proposal continues to be a tax on the middle class. Uh, there's very regressive taxes on cigarettes. He's actually, uh, uh, you know, continuing that in this current budget. Um, we think that out of the legislature we'll continue to see other regressive taxes, and we think that's the wrong move for Minnesota. Do you believe a fourth tier will pass this session? Uh, you know, I don't know, and that's obviously uh, up to the, the Democrats in the legislature, but we hope that people who are concerned about uh, taxes uh, negatively affecting Minnesota's economy will reach out to the legislators and tell them that they think that's the wrong move. Put together a detailed alternative to this? You know, uh, we haven't determined that yet. Um, we'll certainly talk about that, but, but right now we hope that we can still roll up our sleeves and work with the Democrats to come up with a bipartisan budget, but we think this one falls short of that. Anything else? <laughs> Thank you.